Hey everybody, what's up? It's Hold the Truth Hostage, where if the truth was so important, we wouldn't negotiate with lies. This is another episode of Pop the Culture, a black pill perspective on pop culture. Because we got to pop the culture to understand the culture. Now, this video is about what I think a lot of people... And you see this going on online. I think it's uh, nostalgia. And a lot of people talk about, hey, man, when a show's done wrongly, you killed my childhood. You know what I'm saying? You're messing with my childhood. But one thing that's not talked about when it comes to nostalgia is um, the fact that there's different levels of it. There's chosen nostalgia. Then there's, uh, you know, Nostalgia without choice, you know, you know, no choice, because I think when we were little, when we were little kids, whatever the parents played, we watched, you know, let's say around age, probably age four to eight, you know, you, you didn't, you didn't really know how to change the TV. So there's a lot of things you just watched because, you know, that's what the parents put on TV. And, uh, you know, of course you have some fond memories if you can remember them. But then there comes chosen nostalgia. I think chosen nostalgia is when we reach to the age of probably 9 to about 12 or so. When we start choosing what we're watching and what we're entertained by. And the reason I bring this up is that there's a lot of people... I get upset online about nostalgia, but they don't even break it down that some of the stuff they're nostalgic about, they didn't have a choice. You know, you didn't have a choice but to watch that content or be involved with it, you know. For example, you know, when I was a lot younger, I'll give you an example. You got um, TMMT, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle show that came out in... 2003, then you got the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that came out in the 80s, late 80s, and was still playing in the 90s. You know, I remember it as a little kid, though, the original, because I didn't have a choice. When they played, I watched. You know, we didn't really change the TV channels back then. We were too young. But I have a far more fond memory about the one I chose to watch, you know, TMMT, which aired on, you know, 2003. Not that I don't like or enjoy the original from the 90s. You know, I still say that one was amazing. I, I, I enjoyed it, but it isn't the one that I have the fondest memory of nostalgia-wise because I didn't choose to watch that one. That one was placed upon me. I think a lot of people don't cover the difference between nostalgia when you made the choice versus the one you didn't have a choice but to watch. But it turns out you have fond memories of it, you know. And I, I just think, you know, that's something to think about, you know, critically. Because there's some series, if you look back at it, <clears throat> you know, some people are upset online. Oh, man. They're ruining something I grew up on and something I enjoyed when I was little. But these people don't define the fact that this thing they're talking about, they didn't even have a choice but to but to to watch it. So their nostalgia isn't one by choice. It's more of one that they had forced upon them that they didn't have any choice but to watch it. You know, there are certain shows and films, you know, I had to look back. I had to look back at myself and say, man, you know, do I really enjoy this thing or was it forced upon me as a kid? I didn't have a choice. So I watched it, you know, so I find myself not as upset, you know, not even not as upset or as invested in a series because I realize, hey, man. 
you know, growing up when I was little watching that, I didn't choose to watch it. I didn't choose to watch it. It was just played at my uh, younger age. So I think we really got to start questioning that, you know, when it comes to nostalgia, was it something you you were choosing to watch or be entertained by, or was it something just placed upon you, you know? Because growing up when you were little, you didn't have as much choice, you know, and depended on when you grew up. I mean, even now, if your parents gave you, for example, Subway Surfer, you know, growing up as a Zoomer, you were playing Subway Surfer, Gen Z, and you're playing it, and then you didn't have a choice. So you you will remember Subway Surfer fondly because the parents made you play it, but it wasn't something you chose to play. So I think a lot of people have to start looking at nostalgia and start thinking, you know, even if you, you know, you're uh, quick to get upset, you got to think about it critically. Be a criticalist. That's, that's the word I'm trying to popular popularize a lot more cr criticalist you know, where you just think critically and uh you think about it you'll understand that yo there's a lot of things that you grew up watching that or grew up enjoying or participated in that you didn't really have a choice and i think the true anger or disappointment when it comes to nostalgia if they messed up something you grew up on is that when you realize that you chose to watch this, you are at an age where you could change the TV channel or change the, you know, the streaming service to watch what you want to watch. So now you have some anger towards how they messed it up currently. So I would say with nostalgia, you got to start looking at it from a perspective of, am I upset? Because it's something I chose to watch way back. Or is it something I'm just upset about because I'm getting over emotional? You know what I'm saying? Because when you start thinking about it, when you start breaking it down, you'll start to figure out that a lot of stuff that you're nostalgic about or really care about is when you chose to watch it versus... It was forced upon you. You would just come home and this is what they made you watch or made you play or made you, you know, they chose the activity for you. So I think a lot of people got to start looking at that. And when you start thinking in that process of uh, nostalgic things you chose growing up versus nostalgic things that you were made to watch or made to enjoy you start to break down and figure out what you really what you truly care about you know when it comes to something of entertainment or so on you know something you truly remember because you made a choice to watch it versus it was placed upon you or forced upon you to watch or enjoy you know so I think a lot of people got to start breaking that down. You know, what are you truly nostalgic about? Is it something you chose to enjoy, you know, when you were younger versus something you had no choice but to enjoy? You know, once you break down that barrier, you'll come to the realization that, you know, there's not much you're truly angry about or truly disappointed about because... You know, if you chose to watch it, you you have more of a critical aspiration for it. You have more of a critical awareness. You know, for example, when I watched the old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles back in the 90s when I was a lot younger, you know, I, I wasn't mentally, you know, an individual. So I didn't choose. I couldn't really understand the stories as much, you know, more vividly. You know what I mean? It was just something fun to watch. But the one in 20, 2003, TMMT, you know, now I'm, a, I'm an older person. I can actually enjoy the story and break it down. I have more fond awareness of it because I have more critical analysis of the storytelling. And I can always say, because to me, this is a 
perfect defense a lot of people uh, do when you destroy something they enjoy. You know, we don't count it. You know, you don't count it. You know, for example, when it comes to Devil May Cry, I don't count Devil May Cry 2. I don't count Devil May Cry 4. I don't count Devil May Cry 5. I, there's a lot of stuff I don't count because the quality doesn't match what I enjoyed. So, you know, that that's a very great defense when it comes to when a series you enjoy is being destroyed. So you basically don't count it. You know what I mean? You don't count it because it doesn't meet that quality. For example, you know, I'll count Dragon Ball. I'll count Dragon Ball Z. But I don't really count GT beyond Super Saiyan 4 and a few little elements from it. I don't count it. I don't count Dragon Ball Super. You know what I mean? I don't count it. You know, oh, we just painted their hair blue. It's a new form. You know what I mean? I plan to make a video on DBZ. But basically, a lot of people, and I think it'd be a lot healthier for you if you start critically thinking about, is is this something I'm the nostalgic about because I chose to enjoy it or is this something I'm nostalgic about because I had no choice you know what I'm saying so I think once you break it down and realize yeah all this stuff I had no choice about yes I enjoyed it but it wasn't something I chose so you know it is what it is whatever happens to it so so to me, we got to be more critical and start thinking about nostalgia from a perspective of choice versus no choice. And you'll realize that it's a lot easier to still enjoy the stuff you chose. Like, for example, I rewatched the whole Justice League animated series and, you know, it was fire. Still great, man. Still great. And then I went back to other series that I had no choice when I, it was forced upon me to watch it and now I chose to watch it I enjoyed a lot more so I think when it comes to nostalgia we gotta start thinking about something we chose versus something we had no choice and you'll come to arrive at the point where you realize that yeah man because I chose it you know what I'm saying? This new crap they're throwing at me, I won't choose to watch it, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't count, because I didn't choose to watch it. You know what I'm saying? So, it's a lot easier for you to be uh, accepting and moving on beyond that. But, uh, this has been Hold the Truth Hostage with uh, Pop the Culture. Uh, like and subscribe. We'll be dropping a lot more of these.